video is a response in regards to one that was posted by Taryn916. I was thinking about some of the things I heard in her video and I wrote down some notes so I'm going to be referencing them. When I think about the natural hair world, I like the words that come to mind to me are words like, you know, like this is a community that's about dishing out advice and tips and tutorials and styles like women helping women out because um, because a lot of us used to wear our hair straight. We don't really know how to care for our curly hair. So you have these amazing blogs, these websites, these new products, um, these videos where we're all helping each other out because when I first went natural, I didn't know what to do. That's what comes to mind when I think about the community. I, I don't think about it's the black women and it's the 4B hair type. I think I need help because I don't know how to style my hair today or I want to try some updos or I can't figure out how to keep my hair moisturized. I'm not thinking, um, can my... Can, can the black women tell me what to do? I'm thinking, can somebody help me? I don't care if you're mixed, if you're white. Who knows how I can keep my hair moisturized? Because there could be a black woman who has my same hair type or who, who who's has kinkier hair, and she doesn't know. And there could be a white woman who went to school and studied cosmetology and knows everything there is to know about hair. So I don't care who gives the advice. I just want the advice. So the fact that we like divide each other is just weird to me. I don't know, I guess it seems like black women with uh, kinkier coiled hair or whatever, um, like the movement is theirs. Mixed women, women with wavy hair, I mean uh, Caucasian women with curly hair, like this, this really isn't about them because historically um, women with darker skin and kinkier hair have been treated differently um, usually in a negative way than women who are of the same race but lighter or with a looser curl pattern and they're also treated I guess differently than women of other races and you know when I hear that honestly um, I don't know like it means nothing to me when people say that because if you want to talk about historically how women was treated if you want to go back further than this divide between dark kinky haired people versus everyone else uh, go back a little further and look at how women as a whole were treated like like then you would see that at some point all of women were put down. They didn't have a voice. We didn't have rights. You go further back than that, like how women were treated, how they were property, how, I mean, I could go off on a tangent. So the point is, when I hear this, like, well, we need our own movement and our own little rah, 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 because, you know, I'm darker and my hair is kinkier and you don't know what I've been through. Uh, you don't know what it's like to be in a woman's shoes 300 years ago or a thousand years ago. You have no clue. Or you don't even know, like, the what a woman who is white with straight hair or whatever. You don't know what any woman that you've gone through. We all have stories and we all have been treated one way or another or have had to deal with some injustice, whether it was because of the way we looked or the family we came from, whatever. So honestly, when I hear that, that argument means nothing to me. It seems so limited. When I hear about, well, this, we had to form this movement because historically, blah, blah, blah. I live in the present. History has a place and it helps us to know where we came from, but when you use that as your crutch and your soapbox, I really don't want to hear you. Like, I live in the now. It's true, yes, years ago, black people were treated a certain way, and other people. People have been, like, one group has always tried to dominate over another. That That's history. I get it. But I live in the right in the right now in the present but i'm not gonna like keep dragging history behind me to justify 
why I'm trying to say someone else doesn't fit. Like when I hear these complaints about, well, again, we need this movement, we need this, these websites to stick up for us because no one else is doing it because the media and society are disregarding us because some men prefer these other women. Uh, if you don't like what's being shown in the media, then change it. Like, change the channel, first of all. You know, don't buy the magazine because then they would have to do something differently. You know, you don't like the way black women with kinky hair, like, how they're, they're not on TV, then create a TV show. Become a producer. Go to school or network so that you run it and you can present it. I don't get the complaining. I don't. I, I feel like if you're going to complain, you should do something about it. Actually, what a lot of this, like, divide and categorizing sounds like to me, I don't know, it sounds more like esteem issues. When you get to the core of it, I feel like it has little to do with hair and more to do with his esteem, more to do with your perspective and your your belief system. Um, because for one woman to tell another woman, your voice doesn't really hold weight um, because you're not like me. Like, who are you to say that? Like, where, what kind of world are you coming from that you would say that to people? I... And then I, I hear a lot about like hair typing and and again that's that's another reason why we some people disregard others. Some people say well hair typing is important because then I know which products to use um, and I know um, like I can look at other women with similar hair types to figure out how to maintain mine. Honestly for me, that doesn't always work. Uh, we could have the same hair texture and curl pattern and the way shea butter works on your hair doesn't work the same on my hair. And the way it works on your hair may have the same effect on a woman with wavy hair. Um, or, okay, well we have the same hair type so now I can like rely on you. I can look at your videos because I, I can figure out how to style my hair. That, that doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen. So I'm just trying to show you how, like, just because someone has the same hair type doesn't necessarily mean, oh, like, now we connect on a level that other people don't. I think, you know, though, when I think about, I guess, the different comments Tara must be getting, um, it makes me think about my family. You, you, you could see pictures. I did a video of my entire family because we're all natural. And if you look at us, you can tell that we all look different. Say my sister wanted to do her own YouTube channel. Like, it's saddening to think that there would be some people who would come at her and be like, oh, your voice doesn't hold weight because you're not dark skin and your hair's not kinky. Like, I, I would get lying <laughs> or the people, but that's just because it's my siblings. Uh, so that's just kind of sad. I think um, another thing is that when I think about this this movement, I've never, I don't even reference it as a movement. It's it's a community. I think when I think in regards to it, I think about I can go to this community, whether it's websites, blogs, whatever, and I can find advice and help and points of reference on how to manage my hair. I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm not looking for this movement to like redeem the divide between my esteem, society's standards, and my hair type. I'm just looking for somebody to show me how to do a good two-strand twist out. And, I, and I, I mean, I'm not trying to disregard beauty or culture and its effects on people but I guess I don't put I don't define myself by it I, could, I don't know I guess I feel like to limit this community to a specific type of black women 
represents a closed-minded perspective, and that's just unfortunate for that person. You want to go back on historics again, where you talk about, well, but because in the past we were treated this way. If you want to go way, way, way back, back to, I guess, where we all came from, which was, you know, Africa, where you have these kings and queens, that's how we were treated. We were queens. We, we were royalty. I refer to that. Like, why are people, like, using their suffering as their, like, why, why claim that? Why not claim the empowerment from our past and use that to propel us forward? But then also part of me thinks that catering to the specific sect of black women and their kinky hair is a cute marketing scheme where you're guaranteed an audience um, but I feel like that approach isn't sustainable in the long run. The ones that have the biggest impact and that sustain themselves throughout generations are not limited to a niche in the market. So for the business savvy people, I wonder why you limit yourselves in this way. Basically, uh, many of the things, almost all the things, I, I agree with Taryn's video, what she said. And I'm different than her. My hair is different. My skin's different. Our stories are different, but we're also both human beings. This is my opinion. You could take it or leave it. You know, I encourage you make your own video. I say it all the time. Like the people are like, oh, why she say that? I don't agree. Why hide behind your anonymity? Like, why not make your own video then? Write your own blog and express your opinion too. I don't know, I guess I don't use race and hair type to decide if I can relate to a person or if they can offer me help, whether it relates to something else or our hair. That's me. Everybody is different. The term movement is limited to me, and I never reference it like that. I, whatever, community, I do use that term, um, and I feel like the community is open to every woman of every race with curly hair because they all can offer insight but hey a woman with straight hair might have some great tips for me too a man might i learned i've learned tips for men they matter to me so that's all i gotta say what say you